Hi everyone, this is Isaac from IlluminatiWatcher.com. Today we're going to cover some of the news I've seen recently about this temple being rebuilt in New York City and London. Now what this is, is another key step in the Illuminati agenda. Because when you research this stuff long enough, you'll see it always goes back to worshipping these ancient pagan gods. The new age and the new religion and the new world is just a reference to the old world and the old way. And ultimately it goes to Luciferian doctrine and worshipping the fallen angel of Lucifer. You'll also see how they use the entertainment industry as part of this. Because, as Francis Bacon told us, it's easier to teach someone through entertainment than it is to directly lecture them. So let's take a look. The New York Times art article called Life Among the Ruins details these plans. And you'll, you won't, if you look online, you won't see too many major media outlets talking about this. I actually do, had to do a little bit of digging around to find it. But there's this plan to rebuild an ancient site from Syria that was destroyed last year using these giant 3D printers. And what they want to do is they want to rebuild these temples in New York City's Times Square and London's Trafalgar Square. These temples from Syria were the Temple of Baal. And this is a place where these pagan cultures used to worship this deity called Baal who is also referenced as Moloch. And many of you hear that name Moloch and you already know because on IlluminatiWatcher.com I've got a whole article about Moloch. This is the, the ultimate in pagan deities that gets worshipped to this day through blood sacrifice. Now Baal was one of, like I said, all these pagan religions do the same thing. They've got this unholy trinity. He had a, a lunar mother and a solar father. This is no different than the Samir Ms. Nimrod with the Tammuz son legend. So who's Baal? Baal is also known as Baalzebub. Baalzebub. You're probably familiar with that name, the Lord of the Flies, the devil. But anyways, he was this deity that people sacrificed other human beings to, including their own children. They did it for various reasons. They thought this deity could put these blessings on their family. Sometimes they did it in order to provide rain for the crops. In uh, South America, they did a similar thing where they would sacrifice to a deity in order to make the rain stop from to prevent flooding. That's all detailed in my hip-hop conspiracy book, Sacrifice, Magic Behind the Mic, which sounds like it would have nothing to do with this, but it does, I assure you. And you'll find out more in this article. So anyways, these ancient p pagan cultures, they even in the Tower of Babel, they had a, a chamber in which they would do sacrifices to Moloch in a ceremonial manner. And again, we're talking about all of this is just a perversion of an older form of worship, and it goes back even further to Saturn, because Saturn was the god known as Kronos, the one who devours children. So you can see this pagan Illuminati group, they have this way of taking an old belief and repackaging it and presenting it in a new way, all in order to take your energy and send it to the same dark forces. That's why when I talked about Star Wars on uh, Richard Hoagland's show recently, The Other Side of Midnight, I was talking about Star Wars because Star Wars is just a repackaged form of an old pagan belief system and this old religion. The Force is, is no different than the stuff you hear the New Agers talking about with the One Consciousness. It's this impersonal God that they believe in. And they're just trying to present it in a new way because people would reject it. So the New Age packaging is a way of uh, self-help and uh, you know meditation, yoga, that kind of thing. And again, I say it every single time. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these practices per se. I actually do meditation periodically. You just have to understand that these things have roots in a darker uh, system where they take energy and they hijack it towards pagan deities. Because if you study some of these Hindu religions, they've got these left-hand path systems. And in these left-hand path systems, they're taking energy from meditation and they want to channel it, uh, entities from another dimension through them. So as long as you don't start doing that stuff, I think you're okay. Uh, you know, but don't listen to me. What do I know? I'm just saying I don't find anything 
inherently evil in some of these things but if you go down that path too far you can find yourself in this place where you're contacting demons on the other side okay anyways going back to saturn that's the place where they send most of this energy from all this pagan worship and there's saturn worship sites all over the globe because chronos and moloch and Baal all represent the same concept the same con- cosmic deity of sacrifice Saturn's role in the occult history belief system was to introduce death into our world and suffering. He was the outermost uh, planet of the solar system believed at the time, so he was kind of like the dark outside force, kind of like the dark hero. And when Saturn, or Satan, entered our world, he gave us the material aspects. He separated the mind from the matter and that's why he's represented with the black cube. The the four the four sides of the cube represent earth. And everyone knows that Lucifer is the uh the god of this earth so to speak because he is the ultimate deceiver and can take things and material trappings and wealth and all that and entice us to do the wrong things. So let's move on to the other part of my argument. Entertainment. Why does entertainment play into this? Because Drake, of all people, is instrumental to this part of the agenda. Many of you know I've talked about Drake for several years now. He's also in the Hip Hop Conspiracy book. And that's because he's been pushing this owl symbolism. And the owl symbolism is Minerva. I, I previously said Moloch. A lot of people confuse it with Moloch. It's not quite the same entity, but the reason there's a confusion there is because they're both considered deities of sacrifice annually at the bohemian grove cremation of care ceremony you'll see powerful people like ceos celebrities and politicians get together and in this boys club they do this quote-unquote mock sacrifice of a child to this giant stone owl sounds weird right it makes sense when you understand that the illuminati are nothing but satanist pagan types that get together and channel energy to this dark force so i find it odd that drake is obsessed with this owl he has this record label called ovo that's supposed to be an owl with the two eyes and the beak in the middle all of this stuff has the owl artwork so what this has to do with the temples being rebuilt in new york city and london is recently Drake promoted his album called Views from the Six that's supposed to come out. And it's called Views from the Six because he calls Toronto the Six. And no one's quite sure why. Some people claim that it's because it has uh, a six in one of the area codes. Because there's like three or four area codes for Toronto. And one or two of them have a, a six in them. But that doesn't really make sense. But anyways, he's got this campaign to call Toronto the Six. And I've got an article where I talk about his uh, satanic symbolism because I believe it's all about 666 so sure enough he uses this artwork from his summer 16 song to promote the album and it has the all seeing eye with the six hand over it and many of you already know I've got that post about the all seeing eye and the 666 hand how they tie together so when we see Drake using it it confirms that it is definitely 666. And where did he put this? He put this at the London Royal Opera House, which is right down the street from where the Temple of Baal is being resurrected. So I find that odd. I find that odd that Drake 666, all seeing eye hand, is right next to where they're going to rebuild this Temple of Baal. Now add one more layer of complexity to this and you can see there's cause for concern. That last layer I want to talk about is the pagan sacrifice rituals every year that are held. It's called Beltane or May Day. What it is is this time period that starts in mid-April, which is when these temples are supposed to be built in New York City and London. And it, it culminates May 1st with the actual celebration of Beltane. Now traditionally... What it consisted of was 13 days of of blood sacrifices through fire to Moloch, or Baal, 
or Nimrod or Saturn or whatever you want to call this deity. And these pagans used to sacrifice kids in the fires that are now called ball fires or bale fires. Now, historically, there are several tragic events that have happened that included blood sacrifices and fire that all started on April 19th. We've got the Branch Davidian Complex in Waco where all the people burned alive inside the building in 1993. Then in 1995, on April 19th, we had the Oklahoma City bombings with Timothy McVeigh. And something we should consider real quick. I wrote about this in my first book, A Grand Unified Conspiracy Theory. Four years prior to the Oklahoma City bombing, there was a book released. And in this book, it was written by Oklahoma's governor's brother, uh, Frank Keating's brother. It had a bomber named Tom McVeigh. So, anyways, I don't want to go too deep into it, but you can look the book up. It's called The Final Jihad, and it was written well before. It uses the same names, same concept. And it's all about to do with this Valley of Gehenna they talked about in the Bible where they would take blood sacrifices to Moloch. And this all starts with this pagan sacrifice holiday of Beltane. Now, I don't know about you, but there's so many layers to this. But you can see certain connections constantly. we got Moloch, Child Sacrifice, Saturn, Kronos, and the hip-hop uh, conspiracy. You know, why are we finding the same links between rappers and these pagan deities? Now, there's one thing I do know is that I don't condone the destruction of these ancient sites, even if they were places that were horrific and awful. You know, I, I, I don't have a problem with leaving them intact and not destroying them I think they should leave them up so we can learn from it but to take the time to rebuild them it's kind of odd and just know that they're not rebuilding all of these ancient sites that are getting destroyed over there right now for instance there was a, a Christian monastery that was just as old and it has a tomb from 500 AD within it that got destroyed and in that New York Times article they specifically call it out and say that they're not going to rebuild it and then in the same paragraph, they talk about how beautiful the Temple of Baal is compared to it. What do you think that's saying? What it's saying is that our current world is being steered towards the worship of this, this demon, this Baal, Moloch, Beelzebub, Lucifer, whatever you want to call it. Because that's the Illuminati's God. Many of us don't realize that that's where it's heading, but that's where it is. We're surrounded by it. They're surrounding us with these symbols of the the horned god and the mano cornudo hands and it's a way of making us kind of soak in this bathtub of evil if you've seen the 80s movie the golden child you'll know how it works because the child is trapped inside of a cage and surrounded by these evil symbols and it keeps him from using his power and directing his energy and that's what they're doing is they're surrounding us with these same symbols over and over and over so what can we do? All we can do is raise awareness of it. You and I, the commoners, we don't have the power to stop them from doing this necessarily. You can vote with your dollar, which would probably be the most ideal thing to do. But I would suggest raising awareness is the key. Maybe subtly talk about it with your friends and family. It's going to be a hard sell. I know this from personal experience. But little things like this just to get a little interest in it can go a long way. Now, if you want assistance with this of identifying the symbols on IlluminatiWatcher.com, I've created this free email newsletter. You sign up for it, and what you'll get is you'll get periodic emails of my latest findings mixed in with the archives of nothing but the best. And then you'll see how the symbol plays out all the time, all around us. I want to thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks.